<clears throat> Good evening, folks. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight. <clears throat> Moderators, if you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat box. If you can hear my voice clearly, put a one in the chat box. We're going to get started. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight, John Johnson. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight. This is going to be a very uh, <clears throat> important message tonight, a very needed message tonight. Uh, there's a lot of information just flying all over the place, you know, and uh, I felt I had a responsibility to address it. It needs to be addressed. It's very important. Very, very important. I trust that everyone has had a fantastic day today. Positive day today. I know you probably had to go to work. Oh, well. <laughs> My day started off very early today, like 6 o'clock this morning. I've been running around like a, like a chicken with my head cut off all day long. So I had to get some work done on my car. And uh, they still have my car. <laughs> you know, but uh, won't be able to pick it up until Monday. But, oh well, that's life, right? We're still here. And uh, I thank all of you that are here that jump on the stream tonight. Those of you that catch it while it's live, or those of you that tend to catch it from time to time after the stream has ended, uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, what I would ask you to do is uh, when you come in, like, share, and subscribe the stream. That's what gets the message out. It seems to be the hardest thing <laughs> for people to do, but I mean, I will assure you that it's free. <laughs> it's free. There's no charge for it. Uh, yeah, hit the you know hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and hit the share button. That way you can get the information out to as many people as humanly possible. Um, I try to not get before this camera. I uh, do my gut-wrenching best not to do that because I don't want to waste your time. And I certainly don't want to waste the most valuable commodity that I have, which is my time. So if it's my most valuable commodity, I'm sure it's yours. So I don't want to waste your time. I, I want to bring you valuable information, you know, um, that I believe will be useful, helpful, and uh, I believe what I'm going to discuss tonight is very needed in light of the current events. In light of the current events, it has to be said. It has to be said. Uh, I'm going to start off by being transparent first with myself. I did a stream a few days ago. Uh, I was... As you know, we're all very eager to see justice served in the tragic death of Miss Shanquella Robinson, who allegedly was found deceased October the 29th in Los Cabos, Mexico, after going on a trip with so-called friends and within 24 hours of her arrival on the 28th, early morning, I believe, in my personal opinion, I believe, I believe between the hours of 7 a.m. and 12 p.m., she was already deceased. This is my personal feelings about it. Um, I believe there was a lot of inconsistencies in the reports as to her time of death. I just do. Um, but with that being said, with the eagerness of all of us, 
because of the amount of exposure to this case that has gone not just all over the United States, but it has penetrated into many different countries. The whole world is gripped by this story because it was so horrific. It was so brutal. It was so cold, so callous, so mean spirited to a young lady by all accounts, based on her activities and her career ambitions and her entrepreneurship and the success that she was having because of it, did not deserve to be treated this way. This is what made it so gripping, not just here in the United States, but it has captured the attention of everyone all over the world. So like everybody else, me as a content creator, so passionate about this subject, so emotionally uh, tied to this subject, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Because I was so emotionally tied to this subject and my eagerness to see justice had, where Miss Shanquilla Bernada Robinson is concerned. A young lady, beautiful young lady, who was only 25 years of age, born January the 9th of 1997. She would be celebrating her 26th birthday next month. Instead, her parents, her mother, Mrs. Shalahandra Robinson, and Mr. Bernard Robinson, and from what I now know, that is her older sister, Quilla. They will have to arrive at January the 9th of 2023 without her daughter, her mother and father, and without her sister, Quilla. Quilla will not see her sister and neither will her parents. Not this January the 9th. So why is this so, why am I personally so emotionally tied to this subject, to this story? It's because not many years ago, not many years ago, March the 2nd, 2014, I lost my son, one of my sons. And he was the age of 25. I understand very, very clearly what kind of pain she's feeling and what kind of pain he's feeling. And I know what kind of pain her sister's feeling because I have more sons and I watched the pain that they experienced at the loss of their brother. This uh, story is very personal to me and what would be most devastating to me is to say anything out of my mouth anything out of my mouth as a content creator that would hinder this case that would derail this case or that would lend confusion to the listeners who hear my voice. I understand the awesome responsibility of sitting behind a camera and speaking into a microphone. I understand the awesome, enormous responsibility that's tied to that act. And oftentimes behind the camera, in the privacy of your own dwelling, or behind the camera of your own designed studio. You feel almost like you're by yourself and uh, it's just you. Never realizing that what you say 
how you say it and the information you provide could very well be hurting more than it's helping. You have to be careful what you say. You have to be careful how you say it. And you certainly have to take into consideration the individuals who are directly or indirectly affected by what you say, if in fact the subject matter that you are speaking about applies to them, either for or against. As content creators, we have to be more responsible. We are held to a higher standard than the average person who simply sits and listens to us. That's why it can't be taken lightly. It cannot be taken lightly. Uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight and what I'm going to share my screen with you tonight so that you can see the information and understand why so much misinformation is being spread so fast, so broad. Because the diffusion of false information spreads much quicker than the truth. Much quicker, much more impact, and it leaves much more damage in its wake. This is why we have to be careful about how we say a thing and what we say to ensure that who who is listening to us and the information that they we're feeding to them is information that is credible information that is verifiable information that is true is so important I myself fell victim to this same problem. So I'm going to start this stream off by talking about myself. If you look at the screen, this is a statement that I put in after, uh, no, not after. This is the description of tonight's stream, but I'm going to go behind this and read a statement that I put into the group. And for those of you that are subscribers of mine on YouTube, uh, thank you. All of my new subscribers, thank you. Uh, welcome to Let's Go, uh, Let's Talk About It Now, family. Welcome to you. I promise you, I'm going to be committed to giving you good, credible, accurate content. I will do the work. I won't make the mistake again, but I will be transparent in saying that I too found myself in error because of my eagerness in wanting to see justice realized with Shanquilla Robinson is concerned and the Robinson family. Tonight's description for this stream, and you see the title, the title of the stream is, uh, Hashtag justice for Shanquilla Robinson. What not to believe. The description of this particular stream, it says the sad and tragic death of Miss Shanquilla Robinson on October the 9th, 2022 has gripped the entire country. And because of so many content creators throughout YouTube and other social media platforms, this story has now gripped the entire world. This story has gotten the attention of several media outlets and unfortunately, it has also fanned the flames of rumors, assumptions, and false reporting, either intentional or unintentional. Many of these false reports, I don't believe, were done to hurt, but to simply provide the general public with the best available information possible about this tragic case. We are desperately seeking justice for Shanquilla and the entire Robinson family. And in our eagerness 
to see justice realized. Many have trusted unverified information on face value without proper fact checking. What not to believe until all information is verified is critical in this case and content creators, media outlets and the like have a responsibility to deliver information that can be verified. And if what we say is our opinion, then this is what we must be stated. It must be stated that it is our opinion, lest we cause confusion, thereby hindering true justice. So many rumors, so many assumptions, so many false facts are being thrown all over the internet about this case, about uh, Dejanai, Dejanai Jackson, Johnson, uh, Jackson, I'm sorry, Jackson, <laughs> whatever her name is. We don't care what her name is anyway, we just care about the first name, Dejanai. Well, anyway, Miss Dejanay, so many accusations are being thrown around that she has been incarcerated. When the opposite is true, she has not been incarcerated. She has not been detained. Not at all. And I will tell you as a parent who has lost a child, I will tell you, if I was sitting in Miss Shalahandra and Mr. Bernard's shoes right now and had to endure and suffer the barrage of information indicating that a woman who potentially took the life, allegedly took the life of my daughter, that she had been incarcerated, been captured and detained I would be jumping for joy. Imagine jumping for joy only to find out that it was false information. Imagine her heart going up and then dropping down to the bottom of her feet. Imagine that. As content creators, we are responsible for that. I will tell you to all content creators, we all, are, we all are adults. I can't tell you what to do. Do as you will. But I will tell you this. All of us came from a mother. And all of us came from a father. Whether present or absent, we came from a mother and father. And we were raised by someone that cared for us. Loved us cherished us and would have died for us. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility in a case this sensitive. Not only is it sensitive to the ongoing investigation that we are correct, accurate in our statements, But we need to be accurate in our statements and in our information and in our fact checking. Our sources by which we receive the information that we then get in front of a camera to report. We have to ensure if for no one else, for the parents who lost their daughter, that we are in fact sensitive enough, caring enough that we would do the due diligence to get the information that is in fact verifiable information. I will tell you this, Mr. Geraldo Zuniga, the investigative journalist out of Los Cabos, Mexico, I don't believe, at least I don't want to believe, I'll say that. 
I don't want to believe that a man who's been in that area or arena of employment as a investigative journalist for, from what I hear, approximately 20 years. He's covered many cases, many situations. I heard he's overseen police corruption in Mexico and he's watched many of his uh, comrades killed because of exposing corruption in the law enforcement in uh, Mexico. I don't know how true that is. I won't claim to tell you that I do. This is what I hear. I hear he has a track record of doing a lot of good things. But he's done a lot of good things in Mexico. If in fact that information is true. But this is the United States. Two different territories. And in our eagerness, especially as a black community, wanting to see our system, Mrs. Shanquilla Robinson receive justice at the hands of those who share her reflection. We still want to see justice. But in our eagerness to hear someone come forth from the city where the crime was committed, posing in a position of authority, having credentials that appear to be credible, having a track record that appears to be credible, having some accomplishments that appear to be credible as an investigative journalist. Our desire to want to hear the information that we receive from Mr. Geraldo Zuniga, that she was in fact detained, arrested. That's all we wanted to hear. So when your mind is focused on wanting to hear one specific thing, all you need is one specific person to say it. And then we are off to the race. I believe this is what has happened in social media. I believe this in fact is what has happened with many of us that are content creators. I don't believe content creators that spun this narrative had any malice in their heart, no. And I don't support other content creators that trash other content creators for spinning a narrative that they believed but here is where the problem lies. If you find that what you said, why didn't you take your stream down? Why didn't you remove your stream from your YouTube platform? Why didn't you do that? That would have been taking accountability for being incorrect and for spreading misinformation if information that could very well confuse the investigation information that could very well potentially hinder the investigation this is in fact an ongoing federal investigation anytime you have interpol involved which is responsible for doing the paperwork and the negotiation of between one country and another where a crime has been charged as being committed, seeking extradition from one country to the other. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork and a lot of processes that's involved before this happens. No one is just suddenly detained in the middle of the night like they robbed a store. No, that's not how it works at all. When a crime is committed in another country, there's a body of members 
in what I just mentioned, Interpol. It's approximately 194 individuals representing several different countries who have treaties, extradition treaties. The United States currently has 120 different treaties for extradition between 120 different countries. It's so much paperwork. And for us that don't operate on that level, we don't know. We don't understand. I like you. I want justice. That's all I want. I want justice for her mother, who I I am sure is grieving beyond comprehension. And she can't grieve in a healthy way because the, the story has become so public. I mean, think about it. We've lost family members for those of us who had not had to endure public uh, noticeability about that death. We were able and we had the convenience to grieve in private. We had the convenience of being able to grieve on our own time. This mother cannot grieve the same way as the normal person does. Neither can her father, neither can her sister, Quilla. They cannot grieve the same way, no. This is a national and international active investigation. Everywhere she turns, she hears her daughter's name. Every time she turns on the TV, she sees, potentially, her daughter's face. Every time she goes on the internet, she hears or sees her daughter's face. She continues to see that video that showed her daughter being beat continuously. Can you imagine? Put yourself in her place. We as content creators must be more responsible. We must think about her. Think about her father. Think about her sister before we open our mouth about information that is not verifiable. It's such a dangerous thing to do. Such a dangerous thing to do. During the COVID virus, there was a series of uh, platforms that were spewing out false information as it related to the COVID virus. Just as an example, and what happened after a period of time, the Department of Justice brought up charges against those platforms for spewing false information. There is a responsibility once you get behind a camera and once you get behind a microphone, that responsibility changes everything that you've ever done before you've ever done this. We have to be more responsible and we have to be more considerate and we have to be more compassionate and we have to think about the mother and the father and the sister and all of her extended family members who are grieving but cannot grieve in a normal way. I want to read something to you that I shared with my group when I too found myself in error. I want to do all of this before I go right into what I'm going to talk about tonight. And I thank all of you that are hanging out with mm -hmm. me. This is a very important issue to address because it's really to be quite honest with you it's getting out of hand it is in fact getting out of hand i told you false information has a diffusion rate much faster than the truth oh no doubt it's like cancer it spreads much more quicker much quicker than the truth much quicker than the truth at all and i tell you and it does and it leaves uh, fatalities in its wake it leaves a lot of sickness in its wake so we have to address this somebody has to address it 
the way it needs to be addressed so that we can stop doing this until we al and allow the authorities to do their job to do their job we all know that there were some in inconsistencies between the doctor's report and the autopsy they have to they have to address that also as well you know that has to be addressed as well because there was some deception there they have to address that and after they address that clear that up then they move on to different things it's a step-by-step -step process and uh i will tell you uh Mr. Gerardo Zuniga, I I don't want to believe that you had some type of uh, how should I say dis disinformation objective on your mind. I don't want to believe that's what you were doing. See, because disinformation is deliberate false information designed to humiliate designed to cause harm i don't want to believe that's that was your motive i don't want to believe that if you hear my stream i don't want to believe that but it doesn't matter what i want to believe it's like i said in the beginning of the stream any of us that are held with the awesome responsibility of getting behind a camera and getting behind a microphone and opening up our mouth we are responsible for what comes out words are like bullets once you say it you can't take it back you can apologize you can come back and recant your statements which is what a responsible individual would do but you can't remove the fact that you said it. Now you have to be more careful going forward. Don't keep spinning a story that cannot be verified. Stop it. You're hurting her parents. You're not helping. You're hurting her parents. And you're hurting all of those who are sensitive to this issue. Who may not be related to her this has affected the entire world not just mexico this has affected the entire world everywhere in the world they're talking about this case so i don't want to believe mr zuniga that your intentions were in the line of disinformation no i want to believe it was in line with misinformation and those two words have a difference in meaning and i'm going to explain those differences in this stream but before i do that i want to show you what we should do when we find ourselves in error this is what we should do I'm going to read what I shared with uh, my group when I found myself in error. And I'm going to read it. I said to all members of Let's Talk About It, it has sadly come to my attention that Miss Dejanay Jackson has not been officially arrested nor detained as stated in my live stream previously. I sincerely apologize for stating this as fact and raising the hopes of all that listened. I further believe that we as content creators have an awesome responsibility to share serious information based only in verifiable fact. And if this is not done, we as content creators run the risk of hurting a case such as this. I am in error and I take full responsibility for sharing information out of excitement 
and a real feeling that justice was finally being served. The source from which I received this false information came from a source I felt at the time was credible. The source is an investigative reporter out of Los Cabos, Mexico, going under the name of Geraldo Zuniga. So based solely on his position and the many years that he has held that position, I believed him. He in fact, according to the process of how things are done here in the United States as it relates to extradition, detainment and arrest, he lied. At best, he was misinformed. Again, my sincere apologies. Those videos that I produced where I declared her being in detainment and being arrested, I have since deleted those videos. I've taken them off my YouTube stream. My YouTube platform, they're gone. I've taken them off my Facebook platform, they're gone. And wherever else I find them, they're gone. And I would suggest to every content creator, don't get mad at me. Get mad at yourself and take accountability for taking on information that was unverifiable. It's all right. Just be accountable and remove those videos. That's what I would do. If you care, that's what I would do. Remove those videos. Take them down off your stream. I don't care how many views you got. I don't care how many new subscribers you got because of the video. Be responsible. Be accountable. Take the videos down. Think about her mother. Think about her father. Think about those you hurt with false information. My God, you have a mother and a father yourself. Take it down, man. And let's be more responsible and give the public good content, healthy content, factual content. I'm trusting that all of you will do that. Not because I said it, I'm nobody where you're concerned. Not because I said it, no. But because your conscience and your humanity said it. Take it down. And then publicly make a statement that you made a mistake. It's all right to do that, you know. It's all right to do that. Let's get into the real meat of this subject. I want to educate based on the information that I received. And I want to say shout out to a content creator who, in my opinion, did a fantastic job of itemizing, detailing, and breaking down this process. Shout out to Sean Davies' show. Did an incredible job, incredible job of breaking down the process. And I will tell you, me watching his stream is what shook me to my bones and what made me realize that I was in error. That's what made me realize I was in error. I will tell you, I watched his stream and I heard him break it down. And I'm like, oh man, I made a mistake. It came from a good place, but <clears throat> coming from a good place incorrect still causes damage. I knew I had to retract. I knew I had to go back and I knew I had to remove material that I had made public to individuals who would listen, who want the same justice that I want and who would believe my report. I'll tell you something. They believe your report too. Until we get verified information. And I mean 
verified proof. Not somebody's written up report. No, no. I won't accept another person that comes forth saying anything like that. I want to see with my own two eyes, Miss Dejanae Jackson and the other five in handcuffs on live TV. I want to see mug shots. I want to see handcuffs. I want to see jail cell gates closing. I want to see proof. I'm not going to take another person's word on anything as it comes to this case. I will not be irresponsible like that again. That won't happen again. Oh no. Fool me once. Shame on me. I think I said that right. Fool me twice. Shame on you. Huh? You, you, you tell me in the content, in, in, the, in the comment section, whether I got that at mixed up. But you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I'm not going for the okie doke. Somebody trying to get attention. This man even had a cash app set up for him. I'm glad he had the integrity of returning all the money back to those that donated. But you see the danger? Oh, man. Do you see the danger of misinformation? A cash app was set up for him when he was encouraged to set up a cash app. He set it up. And don't you know he received enormous donations? I'm glad he had the integrity of returning it. I don't believe, and that's further proof for me. Because I'm going to tell you right now, folks. If I was telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, What's wrong with me benefiting from the information that's going to help an investigation get solved? I wouldn't have turned in my cash app. That sends up a red flag right there for me. Why would you turn in your, why would you turn, return all the money back to those that donated in your cash app? You set it up. You were encouraged to set it up and you did it. What's going on, man? Your, uh, your conscience bothering you? That sounds like your conscience is bothering you. Why would you return all the money from your cash app donations? If in fact what you are saying is 100% correct. And if at the end of the day, at the end of this investigation, if you are found to have been telling the truth, <laughs> I'll be the first one in line to apologize. But for right now, your information is debunked and I'm going to do that tonight, right now. Let's get into it, folks. Again, thanks for everybody that jumped on the stream tonight. I appreciate you. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's first, first let's go into, uh, I'm sharing my screen right now. Let me, let's go into the letter that started all of this feeding frenzy of information that Miss Dejanae Jackson was incarcerated and detained. Let's read that letter that was made available to us by Mr. Geraldo Zuniga. Let's get into it. This is it right here. It's from a website and I left all the links for you guys to go and check yourself and read it for yourself again. This comes from a website called metropolemics.com. This is a website that is um, that is uh, ran by Mr. Zuniga, from what I understand. And this is the report. Breaking news, you see it? Dejanae Jackson arrested in the United States. Now I want you to follow me closely with how I'm gonna read all of this alleged, false, fake, unverified information. Follow me. Breaking news. Dejanae Jackson arrested in the United States. Okay. San Jose del Cabo, Baja, California. Not California in the United States. This is a section of Mexico. During the night of November the 28th, Dejanae Jackson was arrested by Interpol agents. Let's stop 
right there. Let's go to the Interpol website. Let's see if Interpol has the authority to arrest anyone. Just travel with me a little bit. All right. Okay. Just travel with me. Bear with me one second, folks. I want to get this where you can see it for yourselves. And I promise you, I promise you, after tonight, ain't nobody going to be able to pull no, no wool over your eyes. I promise you that. That won't happen. Just stay with me. One second. All right. Ah, I just had it. Hold on one second, folks. Hold on one second. Bear with me. It's going to be worth the wait. Just hold on with me. It's going to be worth the wait. I promise you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go into Interpol, but I'm going to show you the extradition process so you understand this process clearly. And then I'm going to go right back to Mr. Uh, Geraldo Zuniga's claims that she was in fact arrested and detained. You will understand at the end of this stream how far away from the truth it was. Here's the extradition process. It says the process for extraditing fugitives from a foreign country is described in 18 United States Code. 3184. Foreign extradition requests are generally made through the embassy of the country making the request. What is the country making the request? Los Cabos, Mexico. The request of a fugitive from the United States may then be made to the Department of State. That's here. The Department of State may then forward the request to the Department of Justice Criminal Division Office of International Affairs, abbreviated OIA. Extradition requests can involve a formal request with supporting documentation as required by the extradition treaty. Alternatively, the country may make a request for a provisional arrest in some cases submitted directly to the Department of Justice. Are you seeing that all of these requests end up getting referred to the Department of Justice? Just follow me. Pay attention. Walk with me. When the Organization of International Affairs receives a foreign extradition request, the request is reviewed for sufficiency and forwarded to the appropriate district where the fugitive is located. The assistant United States attorney assigned to the case will obtain a warrant and arrest the fugitive to be brought before a magistrate or district judge. Prosecutors will generally oppose bond in extradition cases. So, uh, Dejeuner, there's no way of getting out of it in bond. You, you can't call a bail bondsman for this one. The individual will then have a hearing before a judge to evaluate the evidence of criminality. If the judge deems the evidence sufficient to sustain the charge under the extradition treaty, the judge will clarify the evidence is sufficient and provide a copy of the testimony to the Secretary of State. A warrant may be issued for commitment to the proper jail where the individual will remain until custody is to be surrendered. Understand what that means, folks. That means if in fact she was arrested and detained, she would have been taken to a location, right? Where she would have remained in custody until she was to be surrendered. There's a negotiation that has to go on between two countries. 
before that country where the crime was not committed surrender their citizen to the country that's charging them with a crime. That's why it debunks. It debunks Mr. Geraldo Zuniga's report. It debunks it. There's too many processes that have to go forward. And at this point, at this point, it's only been, what, a few weeks, four weeks, a month since the incident? I'm going to say, I'm going to show you a few more things, folks, that's going to prove how this report that is spreading all over social media, which many content creators are continuing to repeat, irregardless of the laws of the United States, irregardless of the processes of the United States. I, like I said, too, were victim, but it didn't take me long to figure it out because once I was reminded of my error, I went to work because I refuse, not because of myself, to see this uh, case get derailed, get hindered, or get slowed down because of false information coming from my mouth. I don't want that on my shoulder. No, not at all. Not at all. But listen to this. The individual will then have a hearing before a judge to evaluate the evidence of criminality. If the judge deems the evidence sufficient to sustain the charge under the extradition treaty, the judge will certify the evidence as sufficient and provide a copy of the testimony to the Secretary of State. A warrant may be issued for commitment to the proper jail where the individual will remain until custody is to be surrendered. The Organization of International Affairs will notify the foreign government that the individual is ready to be surrendered and arrange for the transfer of the individual to agents appointed by the requesting country. Extradition hearings are not appealable. So that means she can't appeal it either by the government or the fugitive. However, the fugitive may petition for a writ of habeas corpus as soon as the order for extradition is issued. The district court's decision on the writ of habeas corpus is appealable. You may only have one chance to fight to stay in the country because there is so much riding on the initial hearing. It is important to have an experienced attorney by your side to fight the extradition charges. And this is if she decides to fight. I mean, she likes fighting. I see that. But this is a monster she can't beat. She can't beat. It says, it is important to have an experienced attorney by your side to fight the extradition charges. Your federal defense attorney may also file a writ of habeas corpus if an order is issued to challenge the detention of the individual as unlawful. I would not be surprised if she fights to stay here. She already knows jail is her destination. She knows that. Uh, but if I were in her shoes, uh, I think I'd be fighting very hard to stay here and go to jail. Uh, because she's gonna spend the large portion of her life in jail. And uh, when you compare American jails to Mexican jails, uh, you know, American jail is like the Holiday Inn. So if I was her, I'd be fighting to stay here too. But you see, you see how long the process is, folks. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Now let's go back to Mr. Zuniga. And I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me. But if you care about this case, 
Um, I'm sure at this point in the stream, if you've not heard this kind of information before about it, this should be interesting enough to keep your attention. Dejanay Jackson was placed in federal custody waiting. This is what he says in his article, Mr. Uh, Geraldo Zuniga. Listen, listen to the, oh my God. L listen to the direct statement he's making in this report as if it's concrete sealed in stone. Dejanay Jackson was placed in federal custody waiting for her to begin her extradition process to Mexico, where she will formally accuse the, the femicide of the 25-year-old businesswoman. The extradition process took between one and two weeks. Lie, 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 lie. That's a damn lie. The extradition process takes much longer than two weeks. It can take up to a year And I know that's disheartening for those of us that want to see justice had. I know that's disheartening to those of us that want to see justice had swiftly, but understand swift justice. If all the um, if all the dominoes are lined up and it's a slam dunk case here in the United States, it is a swift conviction. It is a swift arrest. But this is an international crime. This was done on soil outside of the United States. There is a process, uh, ladies and gentlemen. There, It is a process, and it could take weeks, months, and even up to a year to complete the process. I don't feel as though it'll go that long. But I'm being realistic. It could take up to a year to finish the entire process. But this is what Mr. Zuniga is saying to the public here in the United States. The extradition process took between one and two weeks resulting from the procedure that the Attorney General's Office of Justice carried out in the Attorney General's Office of the Republic. And this in turn to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. I can tell already with a red flag something's wrong with this report. Whoever wrote it couldn't even space the letters properly. You know, you're supposed to hit the space bar. It says the Attorney General's Office of the State of Baja, California, sir, managed to prove that the woman who appears in the video attacking Shankola Robinson is precisely Dejanay Jackson as Metro Polymix reported at the time. Who the hell is Metro Polymix? First of all, to have any authority to report any goddamn thing when in fact you need Interpol in conjunction with cooperation from that foreign country with the charge against the suspect or the alleged suspect. In cooperation then with the United States and the Department of Justice, FBI, US Marshals, and many other warrants that have to be issued after being seen by a judge and then allowed to be issued. How is it this Metro Pala mix, whatever the hell it is, and Mr. Geraldo Zuniga, how is it that he has so much access to what not even the general public has access to, much less her mother and father? They don't even know the stuff that he's reporting in this report. They don't even know about the, the stuff he's reporting in this report. But yet he knows it all. He has complete access to FBI files and, <clears throat> oh man, yeah, okay. During the night, he says in this report that whoever typed it don't know how to hit the space bar. During the night of November 28th, Dejanay Jackson was arrested by Interpol agents. Now let's stop right there. Interpol agents are not policemen. They cannot exercise the power of arrest. They work in conjunction with the charging country against the person who is being charged from another country to put the paperwork together 
Then it's evaluated to see if a crime was committed at all. Once they determine a crime in fact was committed, they then petition to have that person brought back to the country after a warrant is issued from that charging country. Oh, but no, not with Mr. Zuniga. During the night of November 28th, Dejanay Jackson was arrested by Interpol agents after a control judge issued an arrest warrant against her for the crime of femicide against Shanquilla Robinson, murdered on October 29th in the Cabo Villas complex in this tourist destination. Then he goes on to further lie and say, Dejanay Jackson remained in federal custody pending the start of her extradition process to Mexico. Again, they still don't know how to hit the space bar. Where she will be formally accused of the femicide of the young businesswoman of 25 years. The extradition process will take between one and two weeks <laughs> derived from the procedure that the state attorney general's office did in the attorney general's office and this in turn, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico. The attorney general's office of the state of Baja California sir, managed to prove that the woman who appears in the video attacking Shane Quella Robinson with blows is precisely Dejanay Jackson as Metro Polymix reported at the time. This report is, I, <clears throat> is trash. And it's insensitive. And it's mean. And it's downright evil. When we understand the process of extradition in this country. Now, let's talk about and let's debunk, if you will, the report from Mr. Geraldo Zuniga, who don't give a damn about Mrs. Chahandra Robinson and how she feels, who does not care how Bernard Robinson and how he feels not connected. at losing his daughter, who does not care. Let's get into it. Let's talk about what Interpol truly can do. Myth one, Interpol agents make and arrests. Complete. Interpol agents make arrests. Okay. No matter how convenient this is as a okay. dramatic device, there are no Interpol agents out there carrying guns, breaking down doors, mm -hmm. and arresting suspects. Interpol itself shares a bit of the blame for this one, as its press release often imply, without ever give, without ever quite stating that Interpol itself is responsible for arresting the latest batch of cigarette smugglers or illicit loggers. But the main guilty party here is Hollywood, which is seemingly addicted to putting so-called Interpol agents in harm's way. When Red Notice, starring Gal Wander, Wonder Woman, Gold Dot as a mysterious jewel thief, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson as a wise-cracking Interpol agent hits theaters in 2020, we might, if we are lucky, reach peak nonsense on this myth. Now listen to this. The reason why this is a myth is obvious. If Interpol was actually an international police agency, it would have the power to override the police and judicial systems of its member nations. Not a single one of those nations would be willing to accept that. Interpol is based on the sovereignty of its member nations, and that does not fit well <laughs> with the Hollywood version of Interpol. <laughs> Here's the other myth. Red notices are international arrest warrants. 
And I'm going to read to you what a red notice is. Interpol doesn't work by breaking down doors. Instead, it works mostly by sending emails. Would you listen to this, folks? Mr. Gerardo Zuniga, he said Interpol agents arrested Denasia Jackson. He said Interpol agents arrested Denasia Jackson. But you clearly see here that it says they don't have that power. It says the best way to understand Interpol, in fact, is to think of it as a managing a communication network over which different kinds of messages, some more formal, some less formal, pass between the member nations, sometimes with Interpol's headquarters in Lyon, France, as an intermediary. The most famous of these messages is Interpol's Red Notice. There is no easy and accurate generalization about the legal effect of a red notice precisely because every nation in Interpol is fully sovereign. You got to understand something, folks, about Interpol. Interpol represents about 194 members, all representing different nations. They work together to bring criminals who commit crimes in various different countries to justice. That's what they do. They're like secretaries of the information so that they can deliver that information to the respective authorities who have arresting powers to bring these individuals who are charged to justice. They are not police. They don't carry guns. They don't walk around kicking in doors. That's the first huge red light on that report. All you need to do is find one lie in what is proposed to be an authentic report to discredit the entire report. Some of you that watched my screen as I shared it, you could see that whoever typed it they don't even know how to use the space bar. It looks like a high school person typed it. Or maybe a middle school student typed it. Don't even know how to use the space bar. Words crunched together. How is that an authentic report? And yet, the whole world is turned upside down from that report. And many of us, as content creators... We fell for the bait. We ate it, we swallowed it, digested it, and then regurgitated it to the public. That's what we did. And that was irresponsible. Let's go into what a red notice is before we close out. I thank you all for hanging out with me. I really do. I thank you all for hanging out with me. Let's talk about this red notice. All right. This is from the Interpol website itself, www.interpol.int. I left all of the sources from which I'm receiving all this information that I'm sharing with you tonight. I left it in, uh, I left it in the description. And uh, I would encourage you to go in your own time over the weekend, if you have, if you get time, to read it yourself. That way, when you hear information like this, you won't become victim like I did and like so many content creators have become and are. What is a red notice? A red notice is a request to law enforcement worldwide to locate and provisionally arrest a person pending, pending extradition, surrender, or similar legal action. It is based on an arrest warrant, which we know she has. That is confirmed and that is verified. But that is the only thing confirmed. And that is the only thing verified. 
nothing else has been confirmed and nothing else has been verified as of yet. It's not that it's not in process, but it hasn't been confirmed. So we have here, it says um, it is based on and warrant or court order issued by the judicial authorities in the requesting country. Member countries apply their own laws in deciding whether to arrest a person. It contains two main types of information. Two main types of information. Information to identify the wanted person, such as their name, date of birth, nationality, hair and eye color, photographs and fingerprints if available. Information related to the crime they are wanted for. And then it goes on to say, which can typically be murder, rape, child abuse, or armed robbery. Red notices are published by Interpol at the request of a member country and must comply with Interpol's constitution and rules. A red notice is an international alert for a wanted person, but it is not an arrest warrant. So, you know, it's so much, I will tell you, that I could say on this. But uh, in the interest of time, I think I said enough for you to understand. Now, I want to say, I want to just want to highlight a few more things. What is disinformation? Disinformation is false information, which is intended to mislead especially propaganda issued by a government organization to a rival power or the media. Let's continue. What's misinformation? And how does, uh, how do you tell the difference between misinformation and disinformation? Listen to this. This is from another article. I put all of this in the description for you uh, guys to go back and look at in your own leisure. It says misinformation versus different from it, disinformation. Get informed on the difference. So you'll know the difference between when you're hearing fake information as opposed to factual information. It says information has real life consequences. It can be a literal lifesaver when it's true. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. Untrue information can cause great harm. Like a virus, wrong information can spread, causing what's been called an infodemic. <laughs> you know how we had a pandemic? Well, we have an infodemic now. Now more than ever, we are experiencing the spread of two forms of wrong information, misinformation and disinformation. These two words, so often used interchangeably, are merely one letter apart. But behind that one letter hides the critical distinction between these confusable words intent. Let's get the facts on misinformation versus disinformation. What is misinformation? Misinformation is false information that is spread regardless of intent to mislead. But a flag in the second half of this definition, it will be important later. The spread of misinformation happens often in our everyday lives. We human being, newsflash, are not perfect. We can all make mistakes. We all forget things. We mishear, misremember details. We tell our friends something we heard on TV or saw on social media that wasn't true. If you're spreading around information that is wrong, but you don't know it is wrong, then you are, well, technically spreading misinformation. And when we say misinformation is an everyday thing, we mean it. For example, say you tell somebody a party is at eight o'clock, but you forget to misread, uh, you, you forget and misread the invitation and tell your friend it starts at nine. You're supplying them with misinformation. You get the point. You get the point. Where does misinformation come from? 
Misinformation comes from, and I'm going to say this uh, from myself, misinformation comes from an individual who got information, had perhaps good intent in sharing that information, but failed to fact check it. That's how misinformation is spread. Disinformation is a person who knows the information is incorrect, but they are, they are there by design to mislead. So disinformation can be given to many of us that have a good heart and have good intentions on spreading this information around with the intent to help or console only to find that you're spreading misinformation from an individual that gave it to you who was sharing with you disinformation. And I'll tell you another problem that we have. Once you are found to have spread misinformation, meaning you have information that has not been fact-checked, and then you find someone who gets information that has been fact-checked, now you have to suffer, you have to find yourself, in many cases, suffering what's called confirmation bias. Now you don't want to hear the credible information because you're stuck in the misinformation and refuse to budge. That's a bad position to be in. That's a bad, bad position to be in. Very bad position to be in. Now, there's a thing called confirmation bias and the power of dis disconfirming evidence. And this will be the last point I make. I think I've said enough to get the point across. And I, I truly hope that it helps us as content creators to change direction, to rethink about what we've said, perhaps retract what we've said already, and just be more careful and responsible of the awesome responsibility that we have by sitting behind a camera. I hope it helps in that way. And I also hope it helps those of you that listen to the stream and listen to others that have shared information like this. Again, I said shout out to uh, Sean Davies' show. Look him up on YouTube. Go subscribe to his page. Uh, I think the brother's pretty sharp. Um, Power off. It says confirmation bias and the power of disconfirming evidence. And the power of disconfirming evidence. Confirmation bias is our tendency Hello, is our tendency Power to cherry pick information that Harry. confirms Harry, our existing beliefs or ideas. Oh man, I gotta read that again. It says confirmation bias is our tendency to cherry pick information that confirms our existing beliefs or ideas. Confirmation bias explains why two people with opposing views on a topic can see the same evidence and come away feeling validated by it. This cognitive bias is most pronounced in the case of ingrained ideological or emotionally charged views. Failing to interpret information in an unbiased way can lead to serious misjudgment. By understanding this, we can learn to identify it in ourselves and others. We can be cautious of data that seems to immediately support our views. And with that being said, folks, uh, I truly thank you for hanging on with me this long. This long. I have so much information. I'm so full. I think I'll do it on another stream. I'll finish it out on another stream. But I truly thank you for staying on the stream with me this long. And for those of you that remained on the stream, uh, I certainly thank you for your time. I hope this helped in getting some understanding of what we're seeing right now. I would say, let us be patient. I would say, let us slow down on what we say. Slow down on how we respond to information as we receive it. Understanding that our platform is so important as it relates to this particular case 
if in fact we choose to talk about it, there's many streams that refuse to touch it. But for those of us that have taken on the task of trying to share this information, we are under the spotlight. We are in the bullseye. And if we are reckless at how we deliver this information, we could find ourselves in trouble with the law for spreading misinformation that in fact and potentially could hurt or hinder a federal investigation. And at least, not at, not at most, but at least, we could end up losing our platforms. So let us be more responsible. And I say this sincerely with love to every content creators. I've done nothing but big you up for flooding social media with this story. But we have to make sure that what we flood social media with is accurate and verifiable. That way the impact of that same information will bring about good results and good outcomes as this case continues to be investigated. And with that being said, I thank you, thank you again for coming on the stream tonight. Hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, get the information out to others. That's how we keep this story alive. I am your host, Charles Chambliss, and this has been another episode or show of Let's Talk About It Now, and we are out. Have a fantastic night, what's left of it, and have a positive and productive day tomorrow. Good night, folks.